Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Edward Willows. Welcome once again to the program. And you're probably wondering why I am dressed in this attire with my Mayberry tie and my Andy Griffith hat. Well, that is because today we have a very special guest that I am honored to have. And I cannot even believe she is here, but she is the lovely Dixie Griffith, who is the daughter of the late, great Andy Griffith. Dixie, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, I cannot believe that there would be anyone on this earth that does not know or ever heard of Andy Griffith. If they are, they are living under a rock. And you have been living the life being Andy's daughter. So I guess uh, the first question is the obvious one that everyone wants to know. What was it like to be Andy Griffith's daughter? Well, I, I guess, you know, it, it was like... Every day was a, a wonderful day, an adventure. You know, I was so young when the show started that I really didn't know he was famous. And I, you know, to me, he was my dad. And, and we did, you know, fun things on the weekends. He went to work in the morning. He came home in the evening. And, I, you know, to me, it was, it was ordinary. I, I didn't know anything different. Uh, I didn't know anything different until somebody told me it was different. Mm -hmm. Until and when, someone told me he was famous. Yeah. And when they <laughs> and when they told you, what was your reaction? Like what? Who? <laughs> well, I you know I don't I don't actually recall that that precise moment. But you know things were a little different for us because we traveled back and forth to North Carolina, and we did things that I don't think other kids did. Mm -hmm. um, going to Las Vegas and different places when he would do shows. And, uh, you know, I, I just, it was like, oh, okay. And I guess, you know, another thing that really struck me is when, when uh, we would go out as a family, people would come up to our table at a restaurant and ask for my dad's autograph. Or, you know, in, in those days, people didn't carry around a uh, phone slash camera. Now, your dad started in the business, of, you know, when television basically was born in the 50s. Uh, how did all of that come about or what? What was he doing before TV? How did the Andy Griffith show materialize for him? And he was um, in the music department at school and, you know, he ideally wanted to be uh, in the ministry. And when he was a freshman in college, I, I have a letter that, that he had written to um, his mother, my grandmother, saying that he was in his dorm room and he could hear singing down below. And it was uh, like a, a chorus of, of men singing. And my dad just kind of fell in love with the music. Um, he did learn how to play the trombone when he was growing up in Mount Airy. And he, you know, changed his major to music and he, he met my mother through uh, the Carolina Playmakers at Chapel Hill um, and ended up doing the Lost Colony Outdoor Theater, which has been going on. This is the 85th season for that. Um, both he and my mom had significant roles at, at one point or another in the five years they were in the show. Um, and kind of one thing led to another. They, they went to New York. Um, I think an agent found him, you know, he did Broadway and, you know, it kind of skyrocketed from there in the late fifties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's amazing how the success of the show is still today. I mean, you have little children watching the Andy Griffith show. And I mean, it's amazing. And the show is doing yet great in the ratings and all that. What do you think was the success behind that show? Um, obviously, your dad was a major input. But do you think it was just the, the down home flair that people like? What do you think made it what it was? Well, I think the simplicity of it and also the wholesomeness definitely had something to say, you know, it was very, it was very pure of heart, I think. And, you know, there was always a moral story in there somewhere and it was clean, 
you know, there was nothing off color about it. Um, it was definitely family oriented, it, you know, and there was the, the foil of Barney to Sheriff Taylor's wisdom and mm -hmm. every character had a, had a, had a beautiful, um, you know, aura to them, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, they all had heart and mm -hmm. soul and, you know, it was, it was, it was just lovely. Yeah, and every member of the cast, I mean, all the way down to Otis, the drunk, <laughs> had a pivotal role in the show. It's amazing. It always amazes me. You can talk to anyone on the street, and I hear, oh, you know, Floyd the Barber, oh, Otis the Drunk, and then, of course, Andy and Aunt B and Opie, and it was amazing how those characters gravitated to the show that everybody remembers them, and they played such a pivotal part in the show. Oh yeah, yeah. They they were all characters, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it was. I think you know. You hear people talk about it's an ensemble show, like you know, Friends, or mm -hmm. I, I can't think of another one except that one at the moment. But but it was an ensemble show. Everybody was important, and like you said, everybody you know had pivotal roles, and you know, uh, just the 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 relationship between Andy and Barney. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was just stunning to watch sometimes because Andy would let Barney get in trouble, you mm -hmm. know, and just kind of just let him, you know, let him play it out, let him come to his own conclusions of what was going on. And, right. and also oh, um, Andy and Barney, of course, Don Knotts, they had a wonderful relationship outside of the show because I read something which really touched me, your dad and him, and correct me if I'm wrong, they were so close that later in life when uh, Don's health sort of was going and all, your dad looked in and always made sure that Don had some kind of work. Is that correct? Well, yes, actually. Uh, Don appeared on a few episodes of Matlock mm -hmm. and um, you know, he adored Don. They they really were, you know, kind of joined at the hip, two peas in a pod, whatever you want to say. And I know my dad did go to the hospital just before, you know, Don had passed. And, you know, he told him he loved him. And, and you know, it was it was really a beautiful relationship that they shared. Mm -hmm. um, now, what was life like filming the show? First of all, were you ever on the set? Never. <laughs> Never. Okay. Did, did, did dad? Oh, did dad talk? I mean, was it a, a long day? What was sort of the routine to film an episode? Well, so from my understanding and rec, well, I can't say recollection other than you know when I got up for school, my dad was already gone, mm. and he he got home usually around dinner time. Um, but they would, you know, they would do table reads of the script uh, at the studio, and then they would film one day a week. And I know that on the days he filmed, they were, it was very long days. Um, you know, he came home sometimes in, you know, full makeup and not, not his costume, but, um, you know, the filming days were very long for him. But he, you know, he loved it. And He'd have some of the writers like uh, Jim Fritzell and Everett Greenbaum, who wrote many episodes, would come to the house and they would work on the scripts together. And I remember Aaron Rubin, he was like a, one of the producers. Mm. You know, he had an integral relationship with, with all the different key people in the production. And he was, he was very hands-on. He loved mm -hmm. He loved helping to edit the scripts and, you know, throw in his own little things here and there. So, you know, your, they, your, your, I, dad, your dad seemed like he was a very meticulous man. Uh, to me, just by watching the show, you can see the seriousness of him where he really cared what he was doing and loved his work. And I think that definitely showed on camera. Yes, I, I think so, too. Thank you for that. You know, he really was the consummate professional, mm -hmm. you know, he and he kind of commanded, if you will, sort of that professional attitude from from everybody. Mm -hmm. And and I think that followed on through the entirety of his career, um, you know, up until his last couple of movies that he did. You know, he really kind of that was 
I, I don't know, maybe that was a comfort for him to have everything in place, to know that everything was going to go as, as scheduled, as planned. And he really did like to have creative, not control, but a, 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 a creative say in how things played out. So yeah, meticulous is a word. Yeah. And you know, it's also very amazing because as you know, the Andy Griffith show, after the Andy Griffith show came Mayberry RFD. After that show, your dad had his own production company. And then he went on to Matlock. And you know, Hollywood, as you know, you can be up one day and boom, down the next. And how did your dad go on with this longevity? I mean, it was decades. He was always at the top. Andy Griffith's name was there somewhere. Well, you know, there were there were some years in there, probably somewhere about in the 70s, um, where he did several pilot pilots um, for made for TV movies um, to see about kicking off series, a new series. And there were several TV movies that he did um, over the years, mostly, as I said, in the 70s. You know, he did a few movies like uh, Hearts of the West with Jeff Bridges and Blythe Danner, which was, I loved it. Um, you know, Angel in My Pocket, I think was late 60s, maybe 69. I think it was after the show. Um, a lot of folks were in that, that, you know, had some thing to do with Mayberry one way or another mm -hmm. but he you know he worked really really hard and and I think that um it took a while for him to get back in the game you know for for Matlock because Matlock you know didn't appear until uh, gosh 85 yeah I was this? gonna say late yeah late 80s somewhere <laughs> in that area yeah yeah uh, and your dad was brilliant in that show, too, as I remember. Did he ever say to you the difference how he felt between Andy Griffith's show versus Matlock? Oh, gosh. Well, it, it was a, mm, you know, I, I don't recall if he was, you know, specifically said, well, Andy Taylor was this and Ben Matlock was that. Mm -hmm. He loved Matlock. He loved the Matlock show. And I think, you know, he always kind of infuses some of his own personality or likes or mm -hmm. dislikes like the hot dog thing matlock was always eating the hot dogs mm -hmm. the hot dog <laughs> well he loved hot dogs uh -huh. you know and um yeah ben matlock was a little bit more laid back you know he kind of i mean he was sharp as attack um brilliant i mean i i think i would liken it to colombo in a way you know i loved colombo growing up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. You know, Ben Matlock kind of had that same sort of, I, I don't know if you'd call it swagger, but. Mm. Persona. Persona. Yeah, yeah exactly. persona. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Now, did your dad ever mention, getting back to the Andy Griffith show, one of his favorite episodes, something he really liked? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> every episode, every season, right? <laughs> I want to say I I think that one was uh, Barney Barney and the choir when when Jim Neighbors when you know uh, Gomer mm -hmm. came in and sang behind the scene for Barney because Barney couldn't hold a note and so in came Gomer and was singing this beautiful solo mm -hmm. um, and of course Barney thought he was singing because. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that episode. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I think that may have been up there with maybe his top five, only because you know he he loved Jim Neighbors' voice and mm -hmm. he loved Don, and you know they really just were a lot of friends and. Yeah. And, you know, it, it also, it amazes me how from your dad's show, the Andy Griffith show, the spinoffs of Mayberry RFD, Gomer Pyle, they were all Mayberry related, everything. How did all of that, I mean, was it same staff, same crew? Was it your dad's production company? Because I know on Gomer Pyle, you'd see Aaron Rubin. Yeah, you know, and it, you'd see Aaron Rubin on at your dad's show. So was it sort of like a big, you know, like back in the day of Petticoat Junction and all the CBS shows, they were all sort of like themed, I guess you could say. You know, I honestly, I, I can't really speak to that other than I think that they may have shared the studio the lot, mm -hmm. but but I, I, I think everybody had their own 
thing happening because you know Gomer Pyle was going on concurrently with with a few you know years of Mayberry mm -hmm. and um so you know and and then well Mayberry RFD took place of course after and I I don't know I I would imagine they probably did use a lot of the same crew mm -hmm. for Mayberry RFD I yeah. I really don't know mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, whether, uh, let me ask you one thing that you would want to tell us that we would be shocked to know about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, oh, that people would be shocked to know. Or I guess I could okay. rephrase it. I've got it for you. Got he it. was a very, uh, very poor sport when it came to playing volleyball. And uh, he was highly competitive and we would play on the beach in the, in the summers. We'd go on picnics on the, our pontoon boat. And my dad was a, a sore lo loser. In fact, I, you know, you might be able to say that may, maybe he kind of bend the rules a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Right. And was, he, was he anything like Andy at home? Oh, you mean like, was he like Sheriff Taylor at yeah. home? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Well, maybe in the discipline area, you know? I mean, I, I remember cringing. At, at, you know, when I would watch episodes where Opie kind of got in trouble, oh, I, you know, I felt it. I felt his pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You know, you didn't, you didn't want to cross my dad too much. Yeah. I mean, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was pretty strict. Yeah. Now, um, has your dad uh, done any hobbies, anything outside of show business? Oh, gosh. Well, he loved to garden. He he really, really did. I mean, I, I remember growing up, um, he liked to be in the yard. He liked to get his hands dirty. He loved planting flowers. We had rose bushes. In fact, at our house in California, one of the houses in California, I remember um, I may have been in trouble and I may have been punished, but I had to help him plant an entire rose garden. And, and maybe I wanted to, I don't remember, but you know, we planted this huge rose garden. It was just so beautiful. So he really loved that. He loved flowers. He loved, um, he loved wildlife. Uh, he did wood, wood carving as a, as a hobby or not wood carving, woodworking he had a little work uh, workshop um at the house and he loved to make little uh yard things that would spin around he would he would cut them with the saw and then paint them and they usually had moving parts <clears throat> excuse me and so he you know he kept himself busy Mm -hmm. And you know, also want to just get back to what we were talking about, everything from that show, spinoffs, all that, not to mention all the memorabilia. You know, I have the tie, the hat. I came across some of these items. Look at this. Andy Griffith trading cards. Oh. I, could, I could not believe it. And I love this. DVDs in a lunchbox. You can you can get anything you want. I, I mean, it's it's yeah. amazing everything that's out there um oh yeah wonderful items and and, the book. and look at this the andy griffith calendar oh yeah yeah so i mean it it just it is amazing how the show has taken a life on of its own now um have you ever obviously you've have you ever met any of the characters obviously you know ron howard correct well, I, I can't say I know him, okay. but I, you know, of course know who he is. I, I happen to be my dad's one time, you know, after I'd left home and I was there and the phone rang and I picked it up and, and it was Ron Howard. <laughs> yeah. And look at the success he has had in it all began with your dad's show. Yeah. And I, you know, I've, I've had the occasion over the last several years um, participating in Mayberry events to see Clint Howard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who, of course, was little Leon in the show, but of right. course, he's his own actor in his own right. And, you know, he's got a lot going on. But I, I remember Don Knotts coming to the house and um, Ken Berry, who was in Mayberry RFD, and mm -hmm. Jack Dodson, who played Howard Sprague, uh, George Lindsay. 
you know, so these folks, his, his friend circle, I guess, you know, on the show, yes, but off the show as well. And, and, mm -hmm. You know, they were a good group of folks, you know. And has it, has it been for you a magical life? Has it been a magical life? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Put you um, on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think every life has its ups and downs and you, mm -hmm. you know, you learn your lessons and, you know, you, uh, I think you experience both sides of the coin you know, I have a good life. I, I've lived in Colorado forever now, for yeah. a really long time. <laughs> Since 1983, I moved out here and I have three daughters that are grown and two grandchildren. And, you know, that's pretty wonderful. I, I mm -hmm. love that. And, you know, I have a special someone in my life and, you know, I live in a beautiful area with lots of wildlife. In fact, I saw your cabin in uh, the opening, and it's like, oh, I I know that area. I know that bear. I've, oh. I've seen that part. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, I've got two. You can't see, but there's deer over here and bears behind me, too, in the sort of the Northwoods look, you know. Well, listen, also, Dixie, before we go, uh, today, the day we're actually doing this show happens to be your dad's birthday. And he would have been today how old? 96. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I have a little cupcake here, some candles without burning down the house. Yes. Put on your hat. I'm going to light the little candles here. And I will tell you what, we will salute your dad, one of the greatest actors that oh. has ever lived. And Andy, to you up above. I know you're celebrating over there. And uh, yeah, he was just a wonderful gentleman. And let's blow out these candles, Dixie. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Hey, we did it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, your dad has provided hours and hours of entertainment to the American, I mean, to the world. Technically, because when I would travel, I would hear in Europe, oh, God, Andy Griffith, you know, I mean, I think it is just absolutely amazing. And I thank you for coming on the program, shedding a little light about your dad and what it was like growing up in the Griffith household. And um, just his career has always amazed me and I'm sure many other people, the longevity and, you know, and always remaining true to his roots and remaining in North Carolina. It was just the life and the lifestyle your dad Dad led, and I think for that he's to be commended. Well, thank you, Mark. I I agree. I agree wholeheartedly on that. So yes. Well, I thank you for being on the show. You are always welcome back. Keep me posted of your future endeavors, whatever you will be doing, and all the best out there in Colorado with those bears. Okay. Same <laughs> to you, Mark. And be careful. Get some bear spray. 